A law professor at the University of Pennsylvania. Her name is Amy Wax. Um, she's in a little bit of trouble after she went on, she was interviewing on the uh, Glenn Lowry show. She's a Lowry show with, with the journalist Glenn Lowry. And she was talking about uh, academia and, and students and how everything flows. And she had a particular kind of student that she feels is just out of place and maybe we need to lessen in this country. Uh, let's listen to what she was saying here. Now that doesn't mean that that this influx of Asian elites is unproblematic. I actually think it's problematic. I don't think it's problematic because of dysfunction or underclass behavior, because we're not seeing that. Uh, although if we had mass migration from those countries, I think that would be a different matter. I think it's because there is this, um, let's call it danger of the dominance of an Asian elite in this country. And what does that mean? What is that going to mean? Uh, to change the culture. So if you guys are getting your racist bingo cards, or maybe a checklist, there's part one, there's too many of them here. And um, what is it that they're doing? Why we keep having this happen? So uh, as we continue on, get ready to check the next box off the list. Aren't they appreciative that we even allowed them to exist? Let's watch. So if you go into medical schools, you'll see that Indians, South Asians are now uh, rising stars uh, in medicine. They're sort of the new Jews, I guess you could say. But these diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives, which are poisoning the scientific establishment and the medical establishment now, and I really think they are, who are the people on the front lines? South Asian women doctors, they are there at the barricades saying, oh, America is a racist society. It's an awful, terrible society. Of course, they chose to come here from India. Nobody ever asked them, like, why are you here? Why should someone who immigrated from India, no, let me finish, and has taken advantage of everything our society has to offer, why shouldn't that person be abjectly grateful and you know recognize overtly all the wonderful things about our country why should they be on the ramparts bashing our country? Tell you what, these uppity folks that just don't understand how to appreciate everything that we've given them in their lives, because without us, they're <laughs> nothing, you know? Um, before we open up, there's a couple more quotes because there was someone who was watching that and pushed back on, uh, on Professor Wax. Yep. Is that her name? Professor Wax a little bit, and she had more to say. So more from uh, from Amy. In my opinion, the Democratic Party is in a pernicious, uh, pernicious uh, influence and force in our country today. It advocates for wokeness, demands equal outcomes despite clear individual and group differences in talent, ability, and drive, mindlessly valorizes blacks, the group most responsible for anti-Asian violence, regardless of behavior or self-inflicted wounds, and attacks the meritocracy. Also. Maybe it's just that Democrats love open borders and Asians want more Asians here. Perhaps they, and especially their this their dis, this staff element, are just mesmerized by the feel-good cult of diversity. I don't know the answer, but as long as most Asians support Democrats to help them advance their positions, I think the United States is better off with fewer Asians and less Asian immigration. Ooh, okay. This is a professor that um, that has, as she pointed out. Asian folks in her classes and talks about what they deserve and what they need and what we should do with them. It's a good so, position boy, to be she, in. Go she ahead. really reached back into the to, to the early 1900s anti-Asian racism with all that. Like I, I felt like I was back uh, against like the, uh, the the Chinese Exclusion Act uh, type of rhetoric at that point. Goodness, man. Yeah, That's it's, uh, something else. If you don't know what Luce is referring to, the Chinese Exclusion Act was uh, an act that uh, banned Chinese from the country, period. It's what Trump wanted mm -hmm. to do with uh, Muslims when he said the total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering Absolutely. the country. It's actually the only race that's ever been banned from America. Um, mm -hmm. And so obviously got lifted later, uh, but it was a deeply racist law that probably Amy Wax uh, thinks uh, we should bring back. Uh, well, I mean, she said it. She said we need. She we, absolutely did. Yeah. Yeah. She said I want fewer Asians in the country. I mean, it's you can't be more explicitly racist than this. And um, so now we're going to get into the implications of that in a second. But uh, and about woke culture and cancel culture, etc. But first, um, 
I just want to break down the hilarious logical inconsistencies. She says, well, we can't have all these Asian elites. Why not? You just said they were elite. <laughs> like, what would be wrong <laughs> with see. bringing elite people into the country? In fact, this is really funny, but Steve Bannon said the same thing in an interview that he had done during the 2016 campaign with Donald Trump. And Donald Trump said no. Donald Trump was like, well, I don't get it. If they're rich, I like it. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. And and Bannon said no, they're they not part. Yeah. And Bannon said they're not part of our culture. Yep. Right. And so when yeah. you've out racist Donald Trump, wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. And 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 it's explicit because you're saying I don't. It's funny that she mentioned meritocracy later because she's explicitly against the meritocracy. She says, I don't yes. want the Asian elites. Later, she talked about how the South Asians in the medical field were the rising stars, and she doesn't want them either. So she said, I don't want the meritocracy because I don't like them based on their race. That's amazing, yeah. it's amazing. So then they'll call, say, hey, if you wanna get her fired, that's cancel culture and you're just being woke. Now, wait a minute, now you're, I actually have a friend's daughter that goes to Penn. Now, this is Penn uh, undergrad, and this is law school, but you get the point, right? And she's Asian. So, mm -hmm. is she supposed to just go take her classes? Are Asian people supposed to go take her class mm -hmm. and think she's gonna be fair to them? No, yeah. she explicitly doesn't like you, doesn't want you here, and is bitter at your success. We cannot have her grading Asian papers, that's insane. By the way, if you're not gonna be shocked to find out she has similar thoughts about blacks. <laughs> okay. Crazy. That's, that's crazy. Bigotry <laughs> goes hand in hand, huh? That's a new one. The, uh, when you talk about the reasons she doesn't like the elites and they're not real, well, maybe she's not thinking they're not real elites, but I think that's a subconscious thought. Like these Asian elites, if they're, coming, if they're immigrants, that means they're a different kind of elite. We're American elites. This kind of elitism is different than your garbage elitism. This, it's a constant comparison of superiority and how much what you deem is great from your country isn't so great because it's not the American version of it. So when you come over here and start stealing our elitism, that's taken away from the people who deserve it here. And also the meritocracy right. point, it's, well, they, they can't be advancing because of the things that they're actually doing or progressing or, or, or even their values. It's because it's kind of given. Which again goes to her thought process that people that are that, that make it in the in the country, which they do, especially in a superiority system where they exclude the others, is you give it to them. Like it's like it's it's in college. It's why there's the the legacy uh, uh, in people that are get put in and Harvard and Princeton and all those schools. Well, my grandfather, my great grandfather went here, so of course I go here too. It's not based on them being smart enough to be there or their test scores or any of that. It's because the meritocracy in this kind of a society is just. Well, you're supposed to be here because you were always here. Your family gave you that name. We give it to you. Who cares if you're an idiot? Who cares if you don't know what you're doing? We need you in this system. So when these outsiders come in and do it, that's the wrong way. It's an upside down thought process. And that's why racism is that ridiculous and ignorant because it just doesn't make any sense. I mean, that's the other thing, guys. I mean, look, I, she's got tenure. So I really, really hesitate uh, in firing anyone who's got tenure. That's kind of the point of tenure. And so it puts us in a very, very difficult situation. But at a bare minimum, she cannot be teaching class because not only because of the racism and you can't have uh, her grading papers of races she despises, uh, and things should not be lifted up, they should be pressed down, right? But on top of that, I don't want her teaching class because she's a moron. I mean, she like, yeah. you think, I mean, to JR's point, George W. Bush got into Harvard uh, and Yale, right? Um, mm -hmm. The guy has an IQ of like 12, right? And his dad went there. Everybody knows why George W. Bush got into those schools. It, like, no one doesn't think that Bush is an idiot. It is not an idiot. Everybody knows he's an idiot, right? And everybody knows he got in because of his dad and his family's last name. And his grades were awful, right? And and Trump and got Trump a, went to Penn. This school. He, his grades were so bad. That he hides his grades. He never releases transcript and is threatened to arrest anyone <laughs> that tries to get his transcript from Penn. He transferred in from Fordham. He's also kept his high school grades and his Fordham grades under wraps and, and the same threats. Why? Because if you saw his Fordham grades, you'd realize he had no prayer of transferring into Penn other than his dad, you know, using mm -hmm. influence money, et cetera, to get him in. So she looks at that and goes, wealth, power, and privilege giving you merit makes sense to her, Asia's working super hard 
and delivering great results, that doesn't make sense to her as merit. Well, then you're a blithering idiot. You're one of the dumbest people I've ever met, and you don't even understand what words mean. So I don't want you teaching anyone, let alone at a prestigious law school like Penn. It's insanity. Look, you want to give her a desk job, put her in a closet somewhere, and have her like, <laughs> and you still want to pay her because of tenure, and you protect the concept of tenure, maybe. But she can't teach class, that's insane. And I, my question to the right wing is, do you really think that that makes sense for her to teach class? And be careful in how yeah. you answer. Because what if there's a tenured professor who says, you know what? I don't think white people have ever deserved anything. Like they all, what, how, what do they deserve? They just use slaves to do their work for them. They're the laziest people in the history of America. And they usually get in here because of legacy and they're bums and they're yeah. rich. You know what? I, I just don't think that uh, they're good enough to be here. Well, do you want him grading white papers, right? You'd be like, oh my God, fire him! Look, it, they already you know saying where, that, that yeah, exactly, Jerry. You know where cancel culture started? It started with conservatives trying to fire uh, 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 professors who dared to think that Palestinians should also have human rights. So mm -hmm. they, like Barry Weiss and others, would go around and say that professor said Palestinians are humans. So fire him! Fire him! Right? Who cares about tenure? They started cancel culture. Mm -hmm. So you know that if someone even tweaked white people, you'd want them burnt at the stake, let alone fired, right? And you got a deep racist here, and you think it's okay for her to teach class? Come on! If you think that, then you're obviously just as racist as she is. Just, just give her the uh, the Milton treatment from office space, you know. Just put her in the basement at her own desk, make her think she's still teaching some sort of a class, and uh, you know, leave her to her own devices for a couple of years. See what happens. Well, I mean, <laughs> let's listen to what the dean of the UPenn Law School actually had to say about this, because I mean, this is not becoming a story; it's getting out there, and maybe they don't, what colleges don't like is too much negative attention, because you know, maybe people mm -hmm. may rethink going to this school, which is. Their purpose for even being there. So this is what uh, uh, the dean at the UPenn Law School had to say about her. Once again, once again, Amy Wax, through her thoroughly anti-intellectual and racist comments uh, denigrating Asian immigrants, underscored a fundamental tension around harmful speech at American universities. Oh, you're on your own point. Like all racist general, uh, generalizations, Wax's recent comments inflict hey. harm by perpetuating stereotypes and placing differential burdens on Asian students, faculty, and staff to carry the weight of this vitriol and bias. Man, what a strong statement from Theodore Rukers. Um, but there's no punishment that's gonna be announced for- Yeah, like is it just a strong statement, that's it? Oh, okay, well, huh. Yeah, it sounds like a Democrat. Because he's been running for office next yeah, year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, don't worry, yeah. we sent a strongly worded letter. Oh wow! Yeah, let me let me let me put you in touch with Dick Durbin. He uh, also <laughs> likes putting out strong words and nothing else. Yeah. So that's <laughs> you, here. Let me translate that letter for you guys. I'm a coward, and I'm so scared that the right wing is going to complain about cancel culture. So I'm hiding under my mm -hmm. desk as I write this letter. Okay. Right. I, I don't I don't want to get a segment uh, from Chris Rufo talking about me for the next like week. So. Yeah, cowards. All right, uh, we <laughs> promised it earlier, so let me just give you her past statements real quick. In 2006, faculty at Penn Law rebuked her public advocacy against same sex marriage. In a 2017 interview on The Glenn Show, Wax said, quote, I don't think I've ever seen a black student graduate in the top quarter of the class and oh. rarely, rarely in the top half, okay? By the way, of course, that is not at all true. She made that up because she's a dumb, lying racist. Um, and so she assumes wrongly that there's no way that a black man could get a good grade. <laughs> and black people are supposed to take her class? Nah, come on, man, that's insanity. By the way, this uh, thing she said in the interview or that we showed you earlier, that blacks commit most of the crime against Asians. Of course, look at the stats, patently, ridiculously wrong. Unsurprisingly, in a majority white country, the overwhelming majority of uh, crimes against Asians are by whites, okay? So it doesn't mean white people are bad or guilty. There's just more white people than anybody else in the country. And you're a professor and you thought really that blacks committed more crimes than whites against Asians in this country with the percentages as they are. The only reason you would assume that, given the numbers, is because you're a racist, as always. And then last yeah. one, when in 2019, students at the Penn Law called for Wax's termination after she was caught on camera saying the United States quote, will be better off with more whites 
and fewer non-whites. Hmm. Gee, so I can't tell she's if she's racist been on or this not. For the longest, what's what's that, Lucid? I said, so she just been on this for the longest, huh? <laughs> it's her identity. It's who yeah. she is. This is how people like the conser current, cons well, all conservatives in throughout history, but also current conservatives in, in the MAGA Trump wing. It's people's identity is surrounded by this racism. It doesn't matter how smart someone mm -hmm. may be or book smart. She's a professor. Doesn't mean that she understands anything about humans or that she doesn't have harbor disgusting thoughts and opinions about other folks that are based in absolutely nothing. People have this thought, yeah. oh my gosh, she's a professor, she must be smart. N no, she can't. Why is that an assumption that has to be made when you hear her over and over and over again say these things? It's the basis for how they go about their lives, no matter what happens. And my last comment is this. Uh, the thing that got under my skin out of all of these, they're all like preposterous, absurd, horrible, etc. right? But when she said that they should be grateful, to be here, okay? Yeah. So, because look at Karen's, Professor Karen's entitlement complex there, right? So she's allowed to say, I don't want any white non-whites here, there should be fewer of them, but whites should rule, Why there should be more whites, more whites in power. I don't like the Asians doing well, I don't like them being rising stars, etc. And by the way, they should be grateful to me. No, no, no deal. <laughs> we don't have to be grateful to your racist ass, okay? Uh, guess why we came here? I'm an immigrant, I came from Turkey. You know why I came here? Because I love the idea of equality. I didn't come here to be your servant, I came here to be equal. And guess what, I'm an American citizen. I am 100% American and I know that bothers you greatly. Oh My God, wait till she finds out I'm Muslim. <laughs> oh, ho, ho, can't wait for that, okay, but no. We do not agree and will never agree to serve you or to put ourselves underneath you and to be grateful for your sorry, ignorant, ridiculous racism. We're not gonna do it. And if it bothers you, great, go cry in your new closet with your stapler, okay? <laughs> and go lecture uh, you know, other racists and they'll love it. Are you kidding me? Go on Steve Bannon's show. You guys can have an agreement fest 24-7. But if Penn lets her teach another class, they're disgusting. And I'll try to get every alumni to never contribute to Penn again for allowing racists like this to grade black and Asian and Indian uh, tests. Are you insane? No, we don't want idiots like this ever teaching class again. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.